Hello. Hello. And welcome to April 2021. Restrictions in Ireland are finally lifting and we are allowed to go outside again. But do we want to? So before we get into the video, there's just something we want to talk about. You might have noticed that Lynn and I are wearing matching t-shirts and that is because we have finally decided after everyone's suggestions on our previous live streams to launch our own merch. Yay! So when we first thought about making merch, we didn't want to do like just standard YouTuber merch, like a logo or anything like that. And we were talking about it and we decided that we wanted to do something that would be something that we would wear, something that would look really cool that we would want to buy. So we got an amazing artist to help us out and do this incredible design. I'm so in love with this design. From the moment we saw it, we were just like, this is amazing. It's so cool. So if you guys want to help support the channel and help us keep making videos and pick up some cool clothes along the way, check out randomgothcouple.store to get your hands on your very own See You In Your Nightmares t-shirt or hoodie. Also, make sure to keep your eye on our Instagrams because we're going to be doing a merch giveaway on there very soon. So we realize it's been a while since the last time we've done a Q&A here on this channel. So we've decided to do a new one because we noticed there's a lot more new people here and we would like to answer your questions. Yeah, we posted on the YouTube community tab and on our Instagram. If you guys had any questions you wanted to ask them to drop them there and we would try to answer them in a future video. So today we are going to be answering some of those questions. So welcome to Ask Two Gots Anything. First question that we're going to answer is one of the most asked questions on YouTube and on Instagram. So many people ask this question and we actually answered it in our previous Q&A video, but because there's so many new people here now, we're going to answer it again. And that question is, how did the two of us meet? It was a stormy Friday the 13th. I was on a lonesome graveyard walk. The rain belted off my hat and my long leather trench coat. As I walked through the gravestones, the moonlight illuminated a figure lying on a beautiful monolith of a tomb. No, we, we met at a petrol station. We met in a petrol station smoking area when we were in like our early teens. It was nowhere near romantic or cool. Like it's a terrible, terrible story. I'm sorry to disappoint anybody. Yeah. Like we did, we were talking about this earlier and that's where we came up with the story of 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 that. Like we were like, "Oh, if only it was like that." But yeah, basically two different friend groups met up and you were there and I was there and and I was there. And you were there. And I was there. And you were also there. <laughs> but anyways, you weren't there and that's why we're telling you this story. Like a casual friend of mine was friends with Lynn's friend group at the time. And I had went to hang out with them and they were hanging out with Lynn and Lynn's friends. So basically there was this like petrol station on the like off ramp to the motorway. It was a really big petrol station. And because of that, it had like a, a shed smoking area that people could like stop and, and smoke at like before they head out onto the motorway. And Lynn's friend group, hung out there being like edgy little teenagers smoking and listening to music and I stuff. I was not smoking. Lynn, Lynn was not smoking, I will give her that. That time. <laughs> <laughs> Basically they hung out there all the time like because they didn't really have anywhere else to go and everyone just sort of met up there because it was the midpoint for everyone. A mutual friend of ours invited me there and I hung out with everyone and that was the first time I ever properly spoke to Lynn or like was properly introduced to her. And that was probably six, seven years maybe before we actually ended up in a relationship with each other. We had actually previously met before that at like a small gathering at someone's house, but we didn't actually speak or talk to each other. So there's a lot of contention between us. Well, yeah, to... we do argue about this a lot, by yeah. the way, everybody. <laughs> like Connor was like, hey, that's the first time we met. And I'm like, I don't remember seeing you there. And then you're like, hey, I saw you there. That's and... the first time I met Lynn, but she didn't meet me. <laughs> first time you saw me. <laughs> Basically a, a friend, like the same friend who invited me up to the other place had invited me out to it was kind of like a party not really a party it was like hanging out it was another shed basically but at someone's house where uh their band practiced and i went there and there was a bunch of people there and lynn was there and someone was like oh yeah that's this person this person this person and that's lynn but she was like busy talking to someone so else so i guess I, you did meet me and i didn't meet you yeah <laughs> essentially someone was like you know when you walk into that situation where you like you don't know anybody there and you come in and people are like oh yeah that's robert and that's kyle and that's joe and that's you know like that's all these 
people. That was the situation. I remember looking at Lynn and being like, oh, she's really cool because she was so emo. The most emo person I had ever seen in Ireland. She was like the pinnacle emo girl at the time. But she was busy talking to someone else and the band was practicing. It was really loud and I was incredibly awkward because there was so many people there. And I think we, I might have said like one thing maybe to you or maybe just been like hi or whatever. But it was the next time at the petrol station shed that we actually spoke to each other and I was like, this chick is cool and uh, I am eventually gonna marry her. And that was because. Yeah, okay, right, 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 okay. So the main reason that you wanted to talk to me was because I was wearing an Iron Maiden beanie that was not mine. It was actually my friend's. And you were like, hey, you like Iron Maiden? And I was like, well, yeah, I like Iron Maiden, but you know, I didn't like them enough to ever buy merch or anything. I just liked a few songs. We were like a huge fan. Yeah, like and Iron Maiden like, were like my peak metalhead, yeah. edgy teenage kid And I was band. just like, whoa, you know a lot about this band. <laughs> like I'm not that into them. Yeah, so, so. That, was, that was incredibly smooth by me. Mm. I saw her wearing Iron Maiden merch was like hey you like Iron Maiden mm -hmm. she was like yeah and I was like let's break down every instrumental track off their that's 13 exactly what, current albums that's exactly what that have been released up to this point is Bruce Dickinson your favorite vocalist are you a Paul Diana person are you a Blaze Bailey person and she was I just didn't like, have a clue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I was just like what? wasn't even her hat I think I told you it wasn't mine though I don't remember no, that. no I did I was like it's not mine it's my friends and my friend I was like my friend over there and I was like, yeah, but I'm already, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've zoned in here. I'm, I'm into this one. But yeah, that's the story of how we met. We were friends for years after that. We like hung out in similar social circles. We saw each other at parties a lot. We would be at the same events and everything. And we like spoke to each other a lot in passing. Like I was always really into Lynn. She was kind of like very uninterested in me. Like, I think you liked when you thought I was like funny to talk to. Yeah, cool no, I really liked you as a friend. But she was like not even remotely romantically no. interested with me. And we were like in relationships with other people like on and off. Like she'd be in a relationship or I'd be in a relationship. But then eventually six, seven years later, we finally clicked when we were both single. And then she just realized that I was so funny that <laughs> <laughs> she just had to, you know, be with this one for life. She doesn't regret the decision to this day at all. So another question, or I suppose two questions that we got a lot of for this video from very many people was one, how long are we together? And two, are we married? But yeah, we are together eight and a half years. It will be our nine year anniversary this August. And as I said, Lynn and I were friends for years before we got in a relationship with each other. And as for the second question, are we married? Show them. No. No, no, we are not this. married. But yeah, no, we're not married. Uh, there's a few reasons we're not married. We originally were planning on buying a house, so I was saving up to buy a house before I wanted to buy a ring and pay money on the wedding and everything. And then we changed our mind and decided that we were going to move to Japan, so we were saving money up for that. And then the world ended and we were stuck in this permanent limbo of never being able to know what we could do about anything or like whether we'd even be able to get married if we wanted to and how many people would be able to go and everyone who was getting married last year had their weddings pushed back to this year and loads of them have been pushed back to even next year so it's all kind of up in the air at the minute but yeah I do want to get married in the future hopefully sooner rather than later when it's possible I'm not one of those anti-marriage people like I know a lot of people are kind of like they're not into marriage or they don't feel like they want to do it which is fair enough yeah we well, don't think it's necessary we just yeah. want to have a big spooky party you know we don't think it's entirely necessary to like have to get married to show that we like each other it's just we want to be able to like i guess solidify it and then celebrate it with a giant spooky halloween themed party yeah. I mean, if you think about it, a wedding is basically just an excuse to throw like the biggest party you're ever going to be able to throw in your life. So you may as well like have fun with it. Yeah. So the next question is from Stella on YouTube and they said, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? The answer to that is Japan. And we've actually, we've tried to move to Japan, tried to move there last year. And of course that was canceled because of everything going on right now. So that didn't get to happen. But the next place I think we would like to move to would be Canada. Yeah, so like Japan wouldn't, I don't think Japan would be the top tier, like number one place I would want to live for the, like if it was the rest of my life thing. I don't think I could live in Japan forever. Like I'd love to live in Japan for a few years. It would be amazing. Like our trip there was so good. Yeah. But if I had to pick like some where to live the ideal place to live forever would probably be Canada because it's close enough to America that it gets a lot of the same cool things America gets and you can travel to America for any of the cool big events without having to basically cross an entire ocean but it's just like a little less 
scary. Yeah. And the and the climate suits me more. Yeah. Like, cause I I don't really like hot weather. I I really enjoy cold weather. Snow is my like peak weather, so Canada works out perfectly for me. So I think. Ideally, yeah. Japan for a few years yeah. and then Canada for the rest of my life. Yeah, because Japan's amazing. Like, when we were there, we were like, like we love it here. We never want to leave. But, you know, the apartments are really, really small there. And we own a lot of things, as you can imagine. And also the weather there, we would probably die in the heat, yeah, honestly. We're Japanese not used to... summer would be something else. Yeah, I don't think we'd handle it well. We were melting in October, so I can only imagine what peak July heat would be like in yeah. Japan, in the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Canada, probably the ideal settle down like country yeah. for the rest of our lives. But we're also looking into Germany. Yeah, on a more realistic plate, we are looking at Germany right now because we don't think we're going to be able to move somewhere that far current state of the world and how things are so Germany within the EU or wouldn't be too difficult for us to get there and like I love Germany I've been there several times Lynn was there from Marilona and she speaks from German from school and stuff but Germany is just one of my favorite places to visit in Europe and I think I could genuinely see us like adapting to life there and like the German people are so lovely yeah, like and so nice there. probably looking like if we are going to move country in the next year to two years, that will probably be the place that we end up. Plus there's so many cool things to see and do in Germany and there's so many Gothic festivals over there. Yeah, there's actually a Gothic in there. We don't really have one here. Yeah, like there's way of Gothic in Marilona. Once you're in Europe, you're in mainland Europe, it's so easy to travel between yeah. countries. So being mainland Europe would be a big boon. And with Monroe and stuff, it would be helpful to be in mainland Europe if we were ever touring or anything around Europe. I think it's also easier to get to Japan from Germany. Germany. Yeah, yeah. We, you, we had to get two flights. We had to get a flight to Germany and then a flight to Japan. Yeah, extra plus side of Germany. We had to fly from here to Germany and then Germany to Japan. Whereas if we live in Germany, one flight to Japan. Yeah. So we have another question here from Caitlin on YouTube. And they said, when you're able, what's the first place you'd like to travel to once this is all done? Uh, also, I love your Scotland vlogs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Well, unrealistically, the first place I'd like to go as soon as we're able to travel again would be back to Japan or back to America. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where I'm really dying to go once we can travel again. But realistically, that's going to be hard. Being realistic, the first place we'll probably go... We've wanted to go to Alton Towers in the UK for Halloween for years now. And that seems like we might be able to achieve yeah. that this year. So that's probably... the the first place we're gonna go once we can travel again like we're obviously gonna film and do videos tomorrow with their Alton Towers Halloween looks amazing you can stay in haunted hotel rooms and they actually have scare actors and stuff like come up in the middle of the night I don't know who we do it I am definitely I mean maybe it. do it for the vlog yeah but like... <laughs> I'm gonna say like so basically scare That's actors not a good idea. will come into your room in the middle of the night when you're sleeping but get and no stuff. sleep yeah, that's the point. You want to be terrified. Oh, so I you, want to be terrified. You would think they finish at like, I don't know, three in the morning or something because that's grand because we would sleep around yeah, yeah. But apparently they keep going. Yeah, they, it's like every two, three hours. I think you can tell happen. them when to stop it though. I ah, know, come on, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> enough wake, of that now. you wake up in bed in the middle of the night with someone just like, woo, and no, you're no, like, no, Jesus, no. will you please? I, it's four in the morning, ghost. <laughs> no, I don't know about this. <laughs> But yeah, that is something we are considering and hopeful that we're going to be able to do this year. All in Terrace Halloween looks amazing. Hopefully it runs semi-normally with all the restrictions currently in place. But we will see. Yeah, so thanks, Caitlin, for your question. Thank you. So the next question on YouTube is from Transition Freak. And they said, how old were you when you started dressing alternative or goth? So how old were you when you first started dressing alternative or goth? Honestly, I don't really remember. I think like... When I was like around nine, I started dressing like a little bit of like a skater girl. But I was still wearing colour. Because the main thing was my family were like, please don't wear a lot of black. At least if you're going to wear baggy skater clothes, like at least wear like a blue or a pink and like just blue jeans and everything like that. So I did that. Wasn't happy. So when I turned 10, that's when uh, I finally begged enough for, it was for Christmas. I finally got my first goth outfit and I will include a picture here somewhere. It's me. Look at this. This is little me. Aww. I look more got there than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I kind of wouldn't have been able to answer that except for I have this picture and I have the date and everything. And I remember um, my two favorite bands were Slipknot and S Club Seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this was the first ever like really goth outfit that I was allowed to have. And also I had glue in red extensions. 
So they were basically like, because by the way, yes, this is not hair dye. It's not clip-in extensions. It's like glue-in, these little glue-in extensions that somehow I was allowed to have just for Christmas. So yes, she has yeah. been she has been an old goth since she was like since 10 was years old. born out of the womb. <laughs> out of the womb. Uh, for me, um, I was lucky in the regard, that, or unlucky. I didn't enjoy it at the time, but now I can appreciate it. When I was growing up, I had a brother who was like five years older than me and we shared a bedroom. He he was very edgy like alt kid when he was a teenager and obviously I was younger than him and that like brushed off on me so he would like always be playing music in the bedroom and he had like posters of all these bands so I took an interest in like alternative stuff from like a really young age as well and I remember when I turned 11 basically my parents turned around to me and said okay like we're gonna stop deciding your haircuts from now on and you get to decide what you want to do with your hair so, <laughs> you were like no haircut yeah and they were like what do you want to do with your hair and I was like like not cut it ever again from the age of 11 till I was I think 16 17 maybe I just grew out my hair and I had like really really long I'm not including pictures by the way <laughs> no one needs to see this but I had really long like curly hair I was like super into metal music from the age of like 11 onwards like we said when I met Lynn I was a massive Iron Maiden fan and Metallica but I was like really also into Nine Inch Nails and all the new metal scene like Korn and everything so that was like my transition into alt stuff was kind of all that but yeah from about 11 years old I was into alt fashion varying different subcultures up until we've finally reached my final evolution point here <laughs> so Lynn has me beat out by one year she was edgier before me. I'm, I'm older than you though. Yeah, you are older than me to be fair. That's why. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'll show one picture. This is me actually, I think I'm 10 years old in this picture. This was before my parents let me grow my hair, but it was when I chose my own clothes. And as you can see, I am like, peak edgy new metal this like it's the corn t-shirt yeah it's corn t-shirt and like baggy shorts or like baggy jeans i was like peak new metal edgy kid like 10 years old so we did start like incredibly young not everyone yeah. i know not everyone gets into alternative stuff when they're that young some people don't discover it until they're in their mid to late teens some people don't discover it until they're like full-blown adults you know like so i don't want to make people feel bad being like we were old from the start you know we were always old yeah. like you can get into subcultures and music and fashion at any point in your life it doesn't make it any more important it just so happens that the two of us were edgy we just children. knew exactly what we liked basically yeah. from the start we like, were you know? edgy kids there was no ifs or anything i was like this is what i like and my parents were like no it's not this is a phase and i was like it is not a phase mom and still not a phase mom you heard it here first it i know is not i know phase, you mom. watched my youtube video it's not a phase here i am so the next YouTube question is from Ronald and they said what influenced you into doing a YouTube channel? It was actually nearly entirely Lynn's idea. So the blame falls completely on her. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so basically we visited Salem a couple of years ago and we came home with some really really terrible phone pictures and phone videos from the trip. We all show our friends and our family and stuff and it was just kind of like see that little blob? That's me. That's me in Salem and I and I was like, oh, I really need to get a camera. So Connor was nice enough to get me a camera for my birthday. And the main reason as well was because we knew we were gonna go to Japan soon. So we knew if we were going to Japan, we would really wanna remember everything and we would wanna get the best pictures possible. So we made sure to have the camera for Japan. Unfortunately, that's why you never see any pictures or videos from Salem, because I know a lot of people have been asking about that. Or from LA, actually, yeah, we were in LA and that was amazing too, but we haven't got videos or pictures. Hopefully we get to go back that we can show you. But that was the main thing. We really just wanted to have more memories and we wanted to get better pictures and videos and stuff. And then, I don't know why then we just like, kind of decided to put them on YouTube. Once we started, like we had the camera and we started recording stuff, I used to have my own old YouTube channel. So I had experience editing videos and stuff. So once I had like all the footage of us doing things, saying like I'd edit them together for us so that we'd be able to watch it. And then I was like, well, if I'm editing it all together for us to watch it, I may as well like edit it in such a way that like other people might enjoy it as well. So then we just started recording videos like for like YouTube as our travel videos yeah. and editing them together. Like so, we would send the videos to our families and stuff. So we just started editing them together and uploading them, being like, hey, maybe someone will see this and enjoy it. Like, yeah. And the main point was that we had something that we could look back on to remind us yeah. of like all of our trips and everything, yeah. which is what's funny because like we never intended for this no. channel to be, never mind as 
like as much as it's grown now, we definitely never intended for no. it to be a bedroom channel like it is now. <laughs> bedroom like, channel. Now. Yeah, we we never mm -hmm. planned on being like no. you know bedroom YouTubers. I always wanted to just keep this channel for us traveling and yeah. kind of like like we even had to take down like some like family videos, videos down because they the definitely channel. didn't yeah. suit the channel and stuff uh, and then also another thing that happened was i was working with a brand on on my own channel which i don't use right now but um they were like hey you know maybe your boyfriend would like to get involved in an unboxing video so that's why we did the first unboxing video and then after that then we we're sitting here watching anthony's video and then when we popped up on the screen i was like straight away i was just like stop watching it stop watching this video right now I think we should really do a reaction video of this. That's kind of where it all started then from there. But the original intent was just to like record our travel videos and upload them for our friends and family. And if anyone else enjoyed them, then that'd be great. The whole reason we ended up being bedroom YouTubers, I suppose, is purely a mix of one, that the channel grew so much over a short period of time. And two, we, you know, everything going on in the world and restrictions and not being able to go outside. It was a nice escape to kind of be able to do videos like this for people. So that's how we ended up here. Pure dumb luck and accidents and coincidences, basically. Yeah. So the next question on YouTube is from Andy and they said, are you genuinely curious about the paranormal or just interested in the aesthetics? This is something I think we kind of disagree on a bit because- I don't think so, no. Because I just like, do not believe in ghosts or anything like that, even remotely. But you believe in supernatural things. No, I don't. You believe in psychics and mediums and like things like that. I personally haven't had any evidence myself yeah. personally, but I do have family members that have gone to like mediums and stuff like that and they've told them stuff and they've been really impressed with it but I haven't ever done it myself. I'm actually too afraid. I don't know why. Maybe one day that could be a cool video. Especially for a, a strong non-believer like you. Um, But I've never witnessed anything myself. Not really. Nothing that will make me a believer. So I think I kind of side with you. Yeah, I take a very hard line on ghosts don't exist and like supernatural activity is is not real so unfortunately yeah it is just an aesthetics thing for me yeah. like i collect ouija boards i just really like yeah we don't use them i really like their aesthetic like there's just something i don't know i've always been kind of drawn to them like aesthetically they're so like cool and you can get so many like differently or innately designed ones they are like very interested in it though yeah. as far as like we would definitely love to do like some ghost hunting on the channel mm. staying like in spooky places and stuff because we are open to it we are very interested in it it's just we've ne why well, just when we're talking about that <laughs> <laughs> what was that i don't know if you could hear that the ghost is laughing at us right now i don't know what well, something happened here but anyways what was i saying um that goes just threw me off. You'll have to leave that there. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it is something anyway. we are open to and interested in, like, to pursue. Yeah. We would love to do, like, videos, like, in haunted places and try to see if we can get any supernatural experiences. But, like, I take a firm, hard line at the minute on... I do not believe ghosts exist and I would love for them to exist. I would love for it to exist. I would love to see a ghost. I would love to have some spooky paranormal story. That if I would have an experience that would convince me that there are supernatural beings, I would be... Or life after death. Yeah, I would be incredibly interested in that. And in the interest of giving you a, an interesting story or something interesting to listen to, I will give you my one my one experience that for a brief period of time made me be like, so basically what happened was a few years ago, I bought a Ouija board online that was secondhand. I didn't realize at the point of buying it that it was secondhand, but I mean, I guess you sort of assume that all Ouija boards are probably secondhand at this stage. And I was actually, this was when Lynn and I didn't live together. I was spending the night at Lynn's house when it arrived. There were family over at my house at the time and I had said, oh, I'll go stay at Lynn's anyway, so there is room if someone wants to stay in my bedroom. So I came home the next day from staying at Lynn's house and I came up to my room and they had left the package that the Ouija board was in on the chair in my room. And there was a little small TV in my bedroom that I used to watch YouTube and stuff and it was on and it had like white noise up on the screen. So I went and like asked them, I was like, hey, who slept in my room last night? You left my TV on all night. 
night and they were like no one stayed in your room last night there was no need because they went and stayed at their friend's house so no one slept in your bedroom and i was like oh that's a bit weird maybe i left my tv on or something like that before I left to go to your house. So I came back upstairs and I opened my package and I realized that it was my new Ouija board. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I like put it up on my shelf on display and everything. And then the TV turned on again on white noise. And I was like, this is so weird. And I like went and looked at it. I found the remote and I turned the TV off again. And it was only then that I started to be like, TV, brand new Ouija board. Nah, that's a full-on coincidence. Well, yeah, what, what are the odds? So then I was, like, texting Lynn about it, being like, oh, yeah, my, like, TV is being weird and my Ouija board arrived. Ooh. <laughs> and as I was, like, texting her, sitting in bed, my TV turned on again on white noise, and it immediately started turning the volume up itself. Like, you know when it comes up on the screen that you're turning up the volume? And the volume just start going up and up and up and up. And if you guys have ever seen a TV when it's on white noise, it just makes this, like incredibly loud sound firing on all frequencies and it was that sound and it was just getting louder and louder and i was like looking and my remote was like over on a desk it wasn't near me i wasn't sitting on it or anything and i just started freaking out and i got up and i unplugged the tv and i just took it out of my room and was like well no more not tv <laughs> just got rid of the not tv not the ouija board the tv <laughs> yeah not so. the ouija board the tv some because people the, might have said why didn't you just get rid of the ouija board but now the tv the comes. ghost was clearly in the tv okay so i got rid of the tv so the ghost already moved from the ouija board into, into the, TV, the tv and then we got yeah. rid of the tv so if you ever have that problem there you go just get rid of your tv problem solved but yeah so it was gone I got a new TV and it worked perfectly. It just happened to be a massive coincidence that my TV decided to break. Uh, it was a quite an old TV and it decided to break on the day that my Ouija board arrived. Incredibly spooky coincidental timing, but I will admit, You're when sure. it happened, when I was sitting here in yeah, bed, you text hearing me and that I was just white like, noise getting louder yeah. and louder, for a minute I was like... You kept texting me about it and I was just like, oh, calm down. You were like, but the TV? And I was like, it's only the TV on the model. Coincidence. Spooky timing, but coincidence. So the next question we have here is from Zane Brand. Hello Zane. How would you go about meeting new friends locally if you were to move somewhere new where you didn't know anybody? I am a terrible person to ask this question because friends. <laughs> I am so antisocial. I am so socially <laughs> awkward. I am so incredibly socially anxious. I wouldn't know anybody now as an adult if it wasn't for you. Like Lynn is the sociable one. I, t I know it's hard to believe but Lynn is the sociable one out of us. I am very like anxious when it comes to people. I look scary, but I'm really nice. <laughs> All of my friends that I know in my adult life and have met in my adult life, I have met either because Lynn has made me go into situations that I wouldn't have went into on my own, or like you've brought me to events that I wouldn't have went to or anything like that, or that you've met online and then through them we've met other people and yeah. stuff. So basically we went years without having any goth friends until we went to Motionless and White actually. So we met a lot of gothic people at Motionless and White and became friends with them. So I recommend definitely going to gigs if you do have that option. And I would say maybe uh, some goth Facebook groups or anything, just have a look out for stuff like that. Other than that, I'm, act I'm actually not sure. Like I said, we went a long time without meeting any gothic people. And then after we met them, after um, Motionless and White, they let us know about goth clubs that we actually didn't even know about. I know for some people, because it's similar to me, they'd be sort of uncomfortable going up and speaking to like random strangers when you're out at like clubs or gigs or anything like that. But that is honestly a great way to meet people with similar interests, to just try like spark conversation with people at gigs or events that yeah. you'd be interested we in. We definitely didn't do that. Yeah. So people or goals, you so. can do what I would do and you can go to these things and hope that and they, someone and they will. They more yeah, they hope that someone own. extroverted will speak to you and start a conversation with you because once that happens then I'm fine it's just the concept of going up and just randomly striking a conversation with someone I don't know is terrifying to me like that's like the worst anxiety I could ever get but yeah if you go to like 
clubs or gigs or like Len said if you join Facebook groups with similar mind like a lot of people I've met online and I would speak to them online like from following them on Instagram or stuff like that you talk to them online a lot and then you'd like eventually kind of meet in person or you'd be at similar events and you'd be like oh I know you because we've like talk to each other on Instagram and stuff. Yeah, basically you have to kind of get out there or get involved, I suppose, with your online scene if you're not out in your local scene. I know right now it's not realistic to be able to go out in a lot of countries or do anything, but big recommendations are Facebook groups, following people on Instagram. Another big one is that when festivals return, a lot of festivals like Maraluna specifically had this when we were there. They have like a meet people board and it's not just like a purely romantic thing. It's just if you are at the festival and you're on your own or it's just say like you and your partner and you want to meet up with other people, you can put like your information, like say your Instagram or your email or your phone number if you're that brave and people will answer your thing and come hang out with you and go see like one of the acts with you or you can go and get food together and talk and stuff. So that is the thing at festivals if you look into it and I think that's a really cool way of doing it but 90% of our friendships I think are purely from people we've spoke to on Instagram or people yeah. we've met at gigs. So we were thinking about maybe making a Facebook group um, just called like Random Got Couple just so everyone could chat in there and kind of find out where everyone is from because at the moment we do have the Discord which will be posted below but it's really great because some people are like hey you're actually not far from me and stuff and like some people think there's like not another got that exists around near them and we thought that for a long time and then we found a couple of friends and there's still probably got the people here that we don't know. Oh for sure. I mean, let us know if you're living in Ireland and you're a goth, let us know. So if that's something you would be interested in, let us know. We can we can start that up soon. So the next question is from Father Anderson on YouTube. And they said, can you be goth without wearing makeup or face paint? Uh, absolutely, 100%. It's not a necessity to enjoy the subculture or the fashion or even just the music to wear makeup you know you don't have to do it if you don't even dress in the fashion and you're interested in the music then yeah you're absolutely a goth you know mm -hmm. like if that's the music that you enjoy you can dress whatever way yeah, this you is want just like an extra you know yeah. it's not it's not needed it's not a necessary point at all it just so happens that we enjoy wearing makeup and doing this and this is how we like to look but I understand it's not for everyone. I mean, I'm 50-50. There's a lot of times I, I don't want to wear makeup because it is a lot of effort to put in. I'm honestly so impressed by lifestyle got to wear makeup like every single day. No yeah, matter that's what not me doing. either. Like, that yeah. is um, an incredible amount yeah. of dedication. Like wake up straight away every day yeah. and put like all your makeup on and, and get a, dressed nice an every day. Outfit. Nah. Yeah, like I couldn't do that. Yeah, if you're interested in the music, it doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you put on your face. If you're interested in the music, you can consider yourself a god. So yeah, thanks for that question. Thank you. So the next question is from Instagram and they asked, how old were you when you started wearing makeup? Yeah, that didn't actually happen for a while longer. Um, eventually, I tried a little bit of eyeliner when I was like maybe 13, 14 maybe. Didn't have a clue what I was doing. Thought it was very scary putting a pencil to my eye. I completely remember how that felt. For anyone that's like thinks they're like really, or they are really afraid of putting eyeliner on, trust me, it gets a lot easier. I remember struggling a lot. Now I close my eye and do this, but like I could just see the thing coming to me and I was so scared and I didn't understand how people did it and I was so frustrated. And I never did a heavier, heavy enough. Like it, I was just like lying in my eyes and it never looked right. And then eventually like after like weeks of putting it on, I got braver and then I started like putting on a lot of eyeliner and then came the white powder and the messy messy powder eyeshadow yeah so i was about like 14 i think i can't really remember but yeah basically started like a tiny bit of eyeliner and then more eyeliner more eyeliner building up got braver to do eyeshadow especially after seeing jared way i was like okay eyeshadow white powder and then it kind of came into my own style after that after i just started uh, after i kind of stopped doing the jared way look I started to do my own thing and then yeah that was it really and i on and off wore makeup for like so many years i think the first time i ever wore makeup was actually corpse paint when i was like 14. <laughs> oh my god i was so into like metal music so i think the first like ever actual like makeup i wore was corpse paint i was true metal back then and i thought that was really cool and then obviously when i was kind of in my mid-teens and we were 
really really into emo I started to wear eyeliner I wore like red and black eyeliner all the time mm -hmm. I didn't wear a foundation or anything until years later like I always just kind of wore eyeliner and maybe like tiny bit of eyeshadow I didn't start wearing foundation and lipstick and stuff until like a few years ago mm. when Lynn and I were together I started to get comfortable wearing eyeliner and stuff again and then I finally was like you know what I'm gonna try like foundation and full-on eyeshadow so yeah like it was kind of on and off through my whole life I would wear makeup sometimes but I was never really kind of a daily makeup person I was never really a regular makeup wearer apart from like terrible eyeliner when I was like yeah Oh, do you know what I'm just thinking now? I know a lot of people as well. The one time they get brave enough to do makeup, like any kind of makeup, is on Halloween. Mm. So now I remember kind of doing vampire looks and stuff when I was really young. Oh yes, you yeah. know, um, from like the costume kind of makeup, you know, that you would find in the shop, like for Halloween. So I do like the black nail varnish and stuff only for Halloween, and then I would keep it after Halloween and keep using it. But then when that was gone, I'd have to wait until Halloween again. Because obviously I didn't know you could buy black nail varnish mm. anywhere else and not on Halloween. It was like a thing. You like, thought black nail varnish was just a seasonal item yeah. just for Halloween? Yeah, That's and I could adorable. never. horrible. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did. Well, if we're going that far back, then I present to you my first ever makeup look. I was probably like eight in this picture, maybe. And I mean, it's pretty close to corpse paint, actually. So, so Dave, if we're going that far back, this, this is when I started wearing makeup. Halloween when I was maybe an eight year old child. <laughs> so the next question on Instagram is from the official Dark Messiah. Settle the age old debate, New Rock or Demonious? For me, Demonious, but I understand why people say New Rocks. I am 50-50 because New Rocks in general are better quality than Demonious. They're also much more expensive yeah. most of the time because of that. Also, my two main issues are, one, if you go on the New York site, there's like 300 pages of shoes and they're all like very similar. Now, I admire the fact that they do lots of variants. Like they'll have the same shoe like five times, but this one will have like gold buckles. This one will have silver buckles. This one will have black buckles. I do like that, but I find it very hard to navigate their website and find something I enjoy. Yeah. And my main... My main issue, and it's been my issue with New Rocks my entire life, my main issue with New Rocks is, I will see a pair of New Rocks, and I will look at them and I'll be like, oh, they're really cool. And then I'm like, but wait, because I guarantee you there will be something on it. They will have done something. There will be some small design aspect or like part of the shoe that I will just not like. You'll have like a beautiful stack platform boot with like really cool buckles up the side of it. And then there'll just be this like really gnarly looking like skull or you something have a pair on of new the rocks side. Though. I have one pair of I new rocks. Yeah, I have one pair of new rocks that I love because they are very simple, plain new rock boots. And I do love those boots. And I do love them more than my Demonias. But in general, I think I would pick Demonia because I was very lucky to find a pair of New Rock boots that didn't have like flames on the side of them or like a skull like logo somewhere on them. That's always my issue. I love New Rocks and then I'm like, there's always one tiny little design thing they put in that turns me off. Whereas Demonias have a tendency to be kind of like stripped down. Stripped mm. down? Have you seen my Demonias? Yeah, yeah, very true. But <laughs> my Demonias like, are like decked out. Yeah, but their designs tend to be more like sleek. You know what I mean? It's all like very simplistic lines and stuff and then they'll just be like really cool buckles on them or like my demonias a padding thing up the sleeve and then just buckles whereas if they were a pair of new rocks they would have that and they would have like flame pattern on the side of them and they would have like cutouts in the the like platform and they would have like a skull on the back of it or something so that's my issue maybe i still have an outdated view of new rock yeah i, I do think that you do have a bit of an outdated thing because one like they're actually pretty affordable now like in, no they're still in like recent years still like, like, they, like they, there's 250 always... euro versus a pair of 120 euro yeah values. i guess that's just there's always huge sales right now like um tk max tj max are having a huge sale on them also the the new rock store have been having a huge sale for a very long time now so that's why we finally got a pair of new rocks to be honest though i do think that the monies are more comfortable as well yeah like i'm never really fully comfortable in a pair of new rocks but my demonias i can literally run in them even though they're like proper like 
platforms like i own like five or six pairs of demonias and i love them all like some of them i won't even wear i'm like this is a piece of art yeah. and i will never <laughs> wear it but like yeah i i they're literally like works of art honestly so bottom line i would say is if you want a reliable like sturdy shoe that will last you a long time go new rocks because they yeah. are much more reliable and they do last a lot longer yeah because i've can... heard that like people are always like oh demonias don't last long and they fall apart and everything but personally like i've literally ran marathons in my demonia shoes and they are fine like yeah, i but do if photo you take, shoots if, on top of mountains and climbing them and they're if, fine if like. you take into account though that you've probably wore those demonias probably max 20 times yeah maybe people wear them yeah. like every but single day people I don't do who that. wear new rocks like wear new rocks every, every day. day like i had a pair of new rocks when i was like 14 and honestly I only threw them out a few years ago because I did not like how they looked anymore. They were still peak condition. Like they hadn't even cracked or anything like that. So if you want like a reliable shoe that's going to last you a long time and you can get a decent like deal on it or a design you like and you're willing to put in the money for it, get new rocks. If you want a comfortable, cheaper that won't last you as long shoe, then go Demonia. Yeah, that's probably why they're lighter as yeah. well because they're cheaper maybe. I like that. I like them to be lighter. End of the day, I would... Still probably side with Demonia 9 times oh, out of 10. Yeah. It's more a style preference. Yeah, though. it's a style preference. Like, I know New Rocks are better shoes, mm. but I just kind of prefer how Demonia's look and fit and feel. This is the last question for the video. I'm sorry if we didn't get to your question. We will do this again in the future, so I do apologize. But the last question is from Cosmic Wanderer on Instagram, and they ask, What are both you and Lynn's ideal careers? So for me personally, music has been the big thing in my life. Like it was what I studied in college. It was what I wanted to do like ever since I was a little kid. So I guess my ideal career would be a full-time music job. I don't think necessarily it would be being a musician or touring or anything for like, the, like an active musician in a band touring for the rest of my life. I think my ideal career would probably be working in like a music studio, either as a producer or maybe composing music for films or games. That was something I wanted to do for a long time because I feel like it's a perfect balance between being creative and still having like a normalish life because I wouldn't be constantly touring around the world every year doing things. I know that takes like a big toll on people mentally, physically, and it's a lot of time spent away from your family and stuff. So a studio job either as a music producer producing albums for bands or maybe composing music for a film or TV would or video games would probably be my ideal career realistically. What about you? So my dream career would be to do special effects makeup on strictly just horror movies because I'm really, really into horror movies. Um, I did study costume design and makeup in college for a while and I really enjoyed the special effects part. Um, but unfortunately there's not like a lot of movies or anything that happen here in Ireland. There's literally just like Game of Thrones and Vikings and stuff. So I'm pretty happy with where I am now on YouTube and on Twitch because that kind of allows me to dress up and we also have a new thing coming out soon where we get to kind of make a little type of movie where I can do special effects makeup and everything. So it's been great like because towards like fashion design and makeup and everything that all comes together on YouTube and Twitch. So I'm pretty happy now where I am unless we move somewhere that will allow me to work on special effects makeup. That would honestly be amazing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, unfortunately that's all the questions we can answer without making this video like six hours long. You guys had so many amazing questions. We really wanted to answer all of them, but there was just no way to get through so many. We will do this again in a future video, another Q&A part two, Ask Got Anything part two. <laughs> in the future at some point but i just want to thank you all so much for your support and all the questions and oh i feel like i always say this but the growth on the channel so far has just been amazing and thank you all so much and if you do want to help to continue to support us check out randomgothcouple.store and get yourself some of our sick merch and help us to continue make oh, videos keep doing the wrong side <laughs> and help us continue to make videos we would appreciate that so much but honestly just by being here and watching our videos and commenting and talking to us it just helps so much and we're so thankful for every single one of you so i hope you enjoyed the video make sure to like if you liked the video feel free to leave us a comment down below uh, if you want to ask us a question that we maybe didn't answer here 
and maybe decide new rocks or demonias once and for all in the comment section or that also if you really like us then feel free to subscribe until next time see, see you in your nightmares, nightmares.